Automatic ventilation began to be added to anesthesia machines after the Second World War. Early anesthesia machines had a breathing system which required the clinician to manually squeeze the reservoir back to ventilate the patients. Today's anesthesia workstation ventilators incorporate ICU like capabilities including a variety of ventilation modes and the ability to allow the patient triggering. I am Dr. Sanish welcoming you to Anesthesia Tools once again for a discussion about modern anesthesia ventilators. Before we start, why do not we take a pre-test question. This pattern is assertion recent type. You can pause the video, read the statements and answer among the 5 options given below. The reservoir bag expands during inspiration with the piston type anesthesia ventilator. This is the assertion statement. The recent statement is the breathing bag participates in the circuit during mechanical ventilation acting as the reservoir for pre-breathing. Let us switch to automatic ventilation mode. While ICU ventilators are simply open circuit using entirely fresh gas for each breath and vending all the exhaled gas into the atmosphere, the anesthesia workstation ventilation must incorporate a means of collecting and re-delivering the patient's exhaled gas in semi-closed cir circle system. This requirement presents unique engineering challenges in the design and control of the anesthesia ventilator. Several methods of uh, classification of ventilators exist. According to the mechanism of uh, action, ventilators can be classified as mechanical thumbs, minute volume dividers, back squeezers and intermittent blowers. Let us move into more contemporary anesthesia ventilators. Based on the drive mechanism, we can classify them into bellows type and non-bellows type. The driving gas from the ventilator does not ventilate the patient directly. The bellows or the bag is squeezed pneumatically by enclosing it in a gas tight perspex canister and feeding the driving gas which is under pressure into the space between the bellows and the canister. The bellows serves as a um, volume reservoir for the breathing gas and the ventilator uses a double circuit bag and bottle design to deliver the breaths. The bellows are typically driven pneumatically. Bellows type ventilators can be sub classified as ascending or descending. The designation of ascending or descending is based on bellows movement on exhalation. On ascending bellows, it moves up during exhalation. In descending bellows type, the bellows moves down during exhalation. Most of the newer anesthesia ventilators support almost all the modes of ventilation available in ICU ventilators. This enables to continue with the same mode of ventilation for sick patients from ICU coming for surgical interventions in the operating room. Mechanically driven, electronically controlled piston type ventilators use a computer controlled stepper motor instead of compressed driving gas to deliver the tidal volume. These are single circuit ventilators because there is no separate ventilator drive gas circuit. The piston operates much like the plunger of a syringe in a cylinder of essentially zero compliance. The ventilator has primarily control over the volume displaced in the circuit and uses the data from the pressure sensors to create the pressure control breaths. We can note the location of the ventilator within the uh, circuit between the fresh gas flow and the inspiratory valve. Here you can find the piston motor. Once the piston moves up, you can see the inspiratory valve opens shown in yellow type valve and the fresh gas decoupling valve actually closes cutting it off 
from the fresh gas inflow. So what happens now is the piston drives in the gas mixture through the inspiratory valve into the patient's lungs. Now what happens to the fresh gas flow? It goes back through the soda lime canister or into the reservoir bag and hence during inspiration the reservoir bag expands. Okay, what happens afterwards? During the initial phase of exhalation before the piston begins moving back to starting position the decoupling valve opens you can see here the piston starts moving the inspiratory valve gets closed and the decoupling valve is open and now the fresh gas can flow into the driving chamber and the exhale circuit also empties into the piston driver and further the reservoir bag also empties through the decoupling valve into the fresh gas inflow inside the piston. Thus you can see that the reservoir bag actually shrinks during the exhalation phase. Now because of the fresh gas decoupling valve when it is closed during the inspiratory phase even if auto flush is pressed the pressure or the excess gas gets buffered by the reservoir bag and it is completely cut off from the inspiratory limb going to the airways. Unlike piston turbine ventilators are there in some of the manufacturers like uh, Drager. They primarily have a pressure generator. Turbine ventilators use mechanical energy to spin a small turbine or fan at very high speeds to create pressure and flow. Some possible functional advantages of turbine based ventilators mentioned include better responsiveness to patient triggering, more effective pressure support ventilation and in some cases more accurate tidal volume delivery under high ventilatory workload. So here you can see the working principle of uh, turbine ventilators. You can identify the turbine rotating faster during the inspiratory phase driving the gas into the lungs and the exhaled gas mixture goes through the expiratory limb and the reservoir bag is also part of the uh, circuit even on mechanical or automatic ventilation mode. So what happens is during inspiration when the turbine or the fan rotates faster it actually empties the reservoir bag or the gas collected in the reservoir bag and pushes it into the patient's airway or lungs. So in this type of ventilation actually during inspiration you can find that the reservoir bag actually collapses during inspiratory phase and during exhalation phase it actually expands. So unlike piston ventilators the turbine ventilators design implies that the breathing bag empties during inspiration and refills during exhalation. The bag's motion may serve as visual indicator of ventilation and depending on the set fresh gas flow of uh, circuit leak as well. Remember there is no decoupling valve in this type of ventilators. Macquay flow eye anesthesia ventilation uses a novel device called the volume reflector to act as the reservoir. The volume reflector is essentially a long plastic tube with a volume of 1.2 liters coiled compactly to fit in the anesthesia ventilation or workstation. The volume reflector is functional and in circuit during all modes of ventilation. The volume reflector therefore acts as a volume reservoir while at the same time preventing mixing in between the gas at the two ends of the tube. Along with the newer modes of ventilation the present anesthesia ventilators also provide lung recruitment maneuvers in single step or multi step as per the user defined pressures without having to disconnect the circuit or switch over to manual mode. The recruitment maneuvers and the compliance trend help the anesthesia providers to decide who benefits and how much PEEP is to be applied during ventilation.
you can find the increase in compliance on the chart or table given on the left hand side of your screen. So, before concluding let us check the answer to this episode's question. I hope uh, everyone got it right. Yes, option E is the correct response. Both assertion and the recent statements are true and it is the correct explanation for the assertion statement. You may go back and check the relevant portion of the lecture again for further clarification. The present generation of anesthesia workstations provide more opportunities for the anesthesiologist to concentrate on monitoring and devote more attention to patient safety. Together let us work towards a safer anesthesia administration with the best use of the technology. Working principles of traditional anesthesia ventilators have been discussed in one of the earlier episodes and the link is provided below. Your feedback may be submitted via www.onlineanesthesiatools.com also. Keep watching the other episodes in anesthesia tools. So, uh, it is me Dr. Sanish signing off for the time being. Goodbye.